I remember when I was living in the United States that I would at times hear people speak of Canada with envy. Some people spoke about free health care for all or paid parental leave. Others spoke about legalized cannabis or the lower drinking age. But they all looked at Canada with envy. And when I came here and would speak to friends and colleagues back home in the US, they too had Canada envy. The politics here didn't seem so divided. The country didn't seem so angry. Last year in particular, I heard this a lot. How great it must be to live in Canada. Lockdowns and quarantines aren't fun anywhere, but they save lives. And I would speak with people in the US and they would tell me how COVID cases were rising out of control. And still, people would not wear masks or stay home. Even worse, I would talk to some people whose local government were not taking COVID seriously. And they would speak of Canada as some mystical place where people understood what a pandemic was, where people understood that thinking about others is important, not just oneself. At the same time, those of us here in Canada looked across the border at our southern neighbor and generally let out a sigh of relief that we were here rather than there. That is why it felt so strange to me these last couple months, hearing so many Canadians share their envy of the United States. As vaccines roll out and some American cities begin to open up, I hear this more and more. I admit that I too feel this way at times. My whole family, my parents, my siblings, everyone back home in the US have received both their doses of the vaccine before I was even eligible here for a dose. And as I write this, 950 million doses of the vaccine have been administered to people around the world. Some countries like the United States are far outpacing Canada in this endeavor. 41% of Americans have received at least one dose and a quarter of the population has been fully vaccinated. Compare this with Canada, where just over a quarter of the country has even received one dose, and only 2.6% of Canadians have received both. It becomes even more upsetting when one realizes that the United States has tens of millions of doses of AstraZeneca in storage. Doses that we need here but beyond a small number, they're refusing to give them to other countries until every American is vaccinated. This vaccine isn't even being distributed in the US, but it's sitting there just the same, just in case. And in the meantime, as American cities begin to open up, here in Canada, here in Toronto, we are locking down as cases threaten to overwhelm our hospitals. And I say this not to remind everyone that we are struggling to vaccinate here in Canada, but because I don't want us to forget what this feels like. I don't want us to forget the frustration of knowing that there is something out there that if only we could get, it would bring us back a sense of normalcy. It was difficult the first year of this pandemic, but now it seems even more difficult because we can see the finish line, yet we are approaching it painfully slowly. I want us to remember how frustrating it is to know there is a vaccine, to know that there is hope, but yet there are obstacles preventing us from reaching it. Whichever side of the border one lives determines whether or not one has access to life-saving medicine. Our Parsha this week is a very famous commandment, Ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha, to love your neighbor as yourself. It's so central that Rabbi Akiva taught it is the fundamental principle of the Torah. And today it is one, I'm sure, many of us wish our neighbors down south would take to heart. The commentator Sforno explains that this command is simple. One should apply the same yardstick to another person that one would want to be applied to themselves in a similar situation. I imagine our neighbors to the south would want us to share if the situation was reversed. And yet it isn't so simple to say they're violating the commandment. We have to ask, who qualifies as a neighbor? Who is your Re'echa? In some cases, it seems the Torah only refers to fellow Jews when it says neighbor. And if that is true, then in our present example, it would only apply to ensuring every American citizen gets a dose. But I want to offer another answer. Because while some have tried to read this commandment really narrowly, there are those who have interpreted it in a much more expansive fashion. In the 13th and 14th century, Rabbi Menachem HaMeiri, 
He expanded the laws which distinguished between Jews and Gentiles to include both. And later, the Malbim interprets the commandment, Ve'ahavta l'recha kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself, as simply a Jewish version of Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, asserting that we should act towards everyone only in ways we want everybody else to act as well. Another 19th century Orthodox commentator, Jacob V. Mecklenburg, asserts unambiguously that the commandment applies to every single human being. This is what I want us to remember. We are all neighbors. If there is anything we should have learned from 2020, it's that the entire world is connected. If a fire breaks out on the house adjacent to yours, you help to put it out because it can easily spread to your own home. And this year should have taught us that just because the fire isn't on the house immediately adjacent to our own, it doesn't mean that our home is safe. Of the 950 million doses that have been distributed around the world of vaccine, over 25% of them have been distributed here in North America. Yet we only make up 7.5% of the world population collectively. Europe contains just 10% of the world population, but disproportionately it's received 20% of vaccine doses to date. Yet 60% of the world lives in Asia, and yet they've only received 45% of the vaccines distributed. And Africa has over 7% of the world population, and yet they've received just over 1% of doses available. It is frustrating because now that a vaccine exists, there are countless preventable deaths around the world each and every day. The longer it takes to vaccinate every person, the more opportunities this virus has to develop an immunity to the vaccine and become resistant. The longer this disease lingers anywhere in the world, we will all suffer from the global economic impact. I want us to remember how it feels. I want us to remember what it's like to be told that doses which could save lives in our community today are just sitting in storage, sitting in case the vaccine gets approval, sitting in case the vaccine is needed by others, by Americans. I want us to remember how it feels. I want us to remember what it feels like to be told that doses which could save lives in our communities today are just sitting in storage, sitting in case the vaccine gets approval, sitting in case it's needed by Americans. As behind as Canada is in getting its citizens vaccinated, we're still far ahead of many other countries. We're still far ahead of much of the world. When we start to open up, when we start to return to a sense of normal, we must not forget there are others who aren't there yet. We must not forget we are all neighbors. If there's anything we should learn this year, is that the entire world is connected. Everyone is our neighbor. We can get through this. We will get through this. But it won't be simply as Jews or as Torontonians or even as Canadians. We will get through this when we see every single human being as our neighbor. Shabbat Shalom.